Welcome back, everyone. We're working on our shooting gallery project. And as you saw in the last tutorial, we created some crosshair objects that allow us to shoot at the screen, but not much else is happening. We need some ducks to fire at to see, um, to make this actually more of an interesting game. So I'm going to close this window for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a duck object. Now, I showed you the last time you can right click on objects to create one, but you can also click on this sphere right here to create an object. And we're going to write object underscore duck. And we're going to choose our duck, sprite duck. So there's our sprite. So now this one's going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do on this is we're going to make it last for about, I don't know, three or four seconds. So what we're going to do is do it just like we did the other one. We're going to create, uh, had a create event, and when that duck is created, it will set off an alarm or set an alarm. In this case, we'll do 90, and we can change this to 120 or whatever. Um, I'll add it. It depends on how long you want it up there. For now, we're just going to put 90. We can choose alarm zero. We don't have to change the alarm because this alarm is related to the ducky, nothing else. So we can have up to... Uh, what is it, 12 alarms for every individual object. That's a lot, uh, way more than we're going to need for this game. So we set the alarm to 0 to 90, 3 seconds. That's 90 divided by 30 is 3 because there's 30 steps per second. And now we're going to have the alarm. When the alarm 0 goes off, we're going to destroy the instance like we did on our other object it applies to self, we click OK. All right, so at this point, the ducky is going to appear and then disappear. Now, we want to try to shoot the ducky. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another event. Now this time, whenever we click on the duck, we want to shoot it. So this one is a mouse click, but in this case, it is the left button, not the global mouse left. And the reason why is we're talking about if we click on the duck itself. So we do left button. We're saying if we're clicking on the actual object in the same location. So what happens if that happens? Well, first of all, if we click on it, we actually hit the duck, we are going to add to our score. So we need to go to score on, under actions. That's on the right-hand side. You'll see score. In the top one here, it looks like three little coins. Those are adding to your score. And we're going to put five. But this case, we want to check relative because if we already have a score of 100, we want it to become 105. If we don't check relative, every time we click the object duck, our score becomes 5. So we've got to check relative. So every time we click successfully, we'll get another 5 points. So we click it, sets the score relative to 5. Let's go ahead and add a few ducks to the room. We go over here, down here, where it says object to add with the left mouse. We want to choose object duck. Note that's under objects, object duck. I'm going to click a few ducks. Notice where I'm clicking right here. It actually puts it right above. And if I move it up or down, it does that for me. So we're going to add a couple ducks here, and let's test it out. I'm going to save my changes, go to test, and we got to shoot these duckies see what happens. I got three seconds to see how many I can hit. And I already noticed a couple things. All right, first of all, when I hit those duckies, look at my score. I got a score of 60. That's really interesting. I did not expect it to be five. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I did not expect it to be that many. I only hit like two or three. I shouldn't have got that many points. So we're going to have to do a couple of things here to sort of help make that a little more accurate. Okay, so one of the things um, I mentioned, we're going to talk, uh, by the way, I, I jumped to the background, and one of the things I want to say that I didn't like, I don't like the way the duckies sort of appear in front of the water. I think it should be behind the water. So one of the things I didn't do, which I should have done, is under background two, I'm going to check this box that says foreground image, and immediately now the duckies that are behind the water, and you'll notice it looks like they're behind the water. And so now we can go back to our objects and place it. As far as the scoring goes, um, you know, the five points, I think it just is when I'm clicking it, it, it's probably registering more than one click. 
Um, at this point, the, the person playing the game is probably not going to think much about the, the score. So I, I think we're probably okay with the score. I'm not going to try to fine tune that. But at this point, uh, let's add a little bit more uh, to our duckies and its behavior. Actually, before I do that, let's do this. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our objects and our object duck. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the duck. And by duplicating the duck, it, this object now has everything the other duck has. But we're going to give it an underscore and we're going to give it um, the, it's the duck target. And I'm going to change the sprite to duck target, adding a, an underscore in between each word like so. So now duck target has the same exact thing. The only difference now is the mask of the sprite is smaller. We have to actually click the little circle in there. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to let this one stay on just a little bit lar longer with the target. So let's do 180. So we'll set it for four seconds. Um, or I mean... Uh, 90, yeah, I'm sorry, we're going to do it for six seconds, excuse me. I'm going to click OK. And so now it'll be up for six seconds. So let's go to the room and add some of the ducks with the target and and see. Um, no, I want to just point out if I try to hit it where the eye is, it's not going to register. It's only going to register if it hits where the target is. So let's go ahead and test that out. I'm going to click one of the one of the duckies first here, make sure that works. And I want to hit over on the face. Notice the hole appeared. All right, now you should have seen that it got a target there and went away. But let's just run it one more time, and I'll let it run even longer. And one of the things too is that crosshair is appearing below it. So we want to deal with depth. So let's go ahead and do that now. On our depth, we're going to give this a positive value. And it either has to be positive or negative. I can't recall. Um, so it, we're just going to try 100 on object crosshair. We're going to go back to the object duck target. We're going to add even more. We're going to make it 260 or 270. Now we're going to add lots of time on here. And let's just go ahead and run it again. Let's see if the crosshair is above it. In which case, that's a depth. And if not, we'll make it a negative 100. Yep, we're going to make it negative 100. Notice when I click there, I'm getting score. Oh, oh I know what I did wrong, and I know why we're getting all these points. <laughs> Guess what I forgot to do? Under the left button, I set the score, but I need to destroy the instance. So let's make sure we do that. So I drag this over here, destroys the instance. Okay, and I need to do that for this duck. So it's on the left button. After we get the score, we then destroy the instance. Click OK. So now they'll disappear. I, I can only hit them once now. And on the crosshair, the depth at 100, we couldn't see it. So we're going to make negative 100 and see if that fixes anything. Let's test it out and see if that works. Yes, now it's above. Click. The moment I hit it, it's gone. And I only have a score of 10, you'll notice, because I only hit the 1. Let's make it worth more points. I actually hit two of them, because I think the one at the target is a little bit harder. So let's add a point. And it really depends on what you want to set this to um, on this other target. But I'm going to make it 20 points. So I go to Object Duck Target, Set Score Relative. I'm going to put 20 on here and click OK. So the ducks are working right, but what we don't want is we don't want to just have to have them appear in the room. We want something to sort of set the timeline on the room. So what we're going to do is we're going to create basically a way of sort of um, sort of playing around with the, tar uh, the timing of the objects. So we're going to create a timeline that can sort of determine how and when the objects appear. So there's, uh, I, last time I showed you, you can click on spheres, on timelines. Um, you can, I believe this is the timeline. Yeah, it has a little, little, uh, little hourglass. Or you can go to resources, and you can find all your resources here. So there's a lot of different ways we can create our timelines. So on here, we're going to call this timeline room burst to be the first timeline we're going to manage. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, uh, where is it? Hold on a second. So we need to add an item to our timeline. So we're going to click uh, add and we need to add a moment. So we need to add a little bit of time here. We're going to put it here 75. Okay. And so this will be a little bit more than one second, uh, a, little, uh, a little bit more than two seconds, about two and a half seconds. Uh, click OK. So what happens at two and a half seconds into the game, we're going to create an object duck. So we go to main one and it's right here. We're going to create the object and we're going to choose object duck. Okay, so now the question is, where do we want it to appear? So in the, with the seven, I think 595 was the Y position up and down. And the X, we want it to be at a random location. Now what I can do is I can write random. And um, notice I put a parenthesis here. And then whatever number I put in, it's going to be between zero and that number. So if I put one, zero, two, four like so. Notice these are parentheses, not brackets. This will pick a random number between 0 and um, 1024, so from the left to the right hand side of the screen. Do not check relative. Okay. Now, in this case, this means the duck could appear part way off the screen. And so what we're going to do is I believe our duck is about a, a hundred um, it's about a hundred pixels wide. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to reduce this number from 1,024 to 824. So like 824. So we're going to take 200 off of that random number, but then we're going to add 100 back in. So if the number it chose was zero, it'd be zero plus 100. In other words, 100 pixels to the right of the screen. So this should move it so you'll never see the duck appear halfway off of the screen. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. So now we're going to duplicate this. So what we want to do is we want to click on here and click duplicate from moment 75 till moment 75. We're going to put 150. So what we're saying is this will repeat the same thing at 150. So it's taking that um, between those moments at 150 is when we're going to do the next. Just click OK. So that duplicates. It's going to repeat. So it's going to do the object duck again. Let's duplicate that one more time. So we're going to click duplicate. And this time we're going to put 250. Actually, no, we're not going to duplicate. I'm going to cancel that. Well, actually, I guess we could duplicate it. One of the things you'll notice is we got the instance here. We have it again. Let's click it, duplicate it, and this time we'll put 250. Uh, we'll do 225. Click OK. But now what we're going to do is at 225, we're going to change this instance not from duck, but to duck target, and click OK. Now one of the things that we're going to want to make sure we do um, is we want to make sure that. Um, we do one more step, and um, we're going to add a step at 300. So we're going to duplicate again. So we're going to put 300. I'm going to click OK. Now what we're going to do is we are going to set the timeline speed to be a little bit faster. In fact, 10% faster. We want it to become more difficult as we go. Okay, so we have the instance, the object, duck, target. So we're going to go to step 300. And now what we want to do is go to main 2. And you'll see this timeline. We're going to drag it over. And we're going to put in here a speed of 0.1. And we're going to check relative. So now it's going to be 1.1. It's going to be a little bit faster. So 10% faster. And then if it repeats a second time, it'll become 20% faster. In other words, it's going to keep going faster and faster as we go. So let's go ahead and click OK. So this is our timeline for the first room. And now what we need to do is create a controller that will control the timeline. Now this is another object. So we, it's going to tie into this timeline. But it is an object, so we're going to click on objects. And we're going to create a new object clicking on that sphere. And this time, the object is going to be object underscore controller. So this is going to control the way the game works. 
there's going to be no sprite. So we're going to leave that alone. And we're going to add a create event. So we go to create. So on the create event, what we're going to do is set the timeline. And we're going to set it to loop. That's main two. So we drag timeline. We're going to select our timeline room first. Um, position, I don't think the position matters, so we're going to leave that there. I'm going to start immediately, and we're going to tell it to loop. So it's going to keep doing that over and over and over again. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, the other thing we should do is we should also, on create, set the score to zero. So we're going to go back to score, which is underscore. Um, and we're going to set it to zero. We're not going to choose relative. We're just going to click OK. That way, no matter what, the game will always start at zero. We're going to clean it up just a little bit. I want to go back to the object duck. Um, and on the alarm, uh, or on the alarm, I want to keep them all at 90. So the duck target is going to be the same thing. On create, the alarm is going to go back to 90. Click OK. All right, so that's good. And then um, on our object controller, I think we got everything set up. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go back to our room. And we need to delete all of these objects except for the crosshair. So we're going to get rid of our duckies. All right, so the duckies are gone. And in, in its place, we're going to add the object controller. we got to add it to the room. Now, because there's no sprite, we just have this little blue circle with a question mark. If I hover over it, I look down at the bottom. You want to look at the bottom of the screen. It'll tell you what the object is. It says object controller. Okay, and it shows the position. Don't worry about the position. This just means it's going to run the timeline. So let's go ahead, save our changes, and test it out. Now let's see if the duckies start appearing. We should start with a score of zero. Oh, click. Did I hit it? Yep, I got a score of five. Ten. Did I get it? You'll start noticing they appear faster and faster as we go. They stay on a little less time. Notice how they're always appearing at different locations. <laughs> and anyway, we get the idea. Okay, so this is working. Now I can go ahead and stop this game. If I were to start it again, it would start at zero, you would see. Now normally that would actually work. Um, it should start at zero anyway, but it's always a good idea on your object controller to begin on create, set the score to zero. So at this point, we have a pretty close game, uh, pretty good for what we have. In the future tutorials, we're going to talk about adding a font for drawing text on the screen and dealing with ammo and ending the game. So um, that's going to be how we work it, so stay tuned for those videos.